Hello, everyone. This is Fernando with Texas United Realty, um, one of the mentors. I appreciate you attending my webinar. So uh, in today's webinar, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, merging and adding and splitting PDF files using dot loop, how to upload PDF files in dot loop, uh, modifying PDF files and sending them for client signatures, how to download docs and from dot loop and prep them to be sent via email as attachments, uh, compressing PDF files. Sometimes these files can be really big and we need to compress them as well. And <clears throat> lastly, uh, tips on managing uh, and creating PDF files. Now you as agents um, are going to always be um, working on files. Um, I've had some of my students uh, inform me that, you know, oh, Fernando, how do I, how do I make a, a file where I only send certain amount of uh, documentation. So, um, so I'm going to assume everybody knows how to create a document. So I'm not going to be focusing on that. The main um, topic for this webinar is more how to how to manage the PDF file itself. <clears throat> so right now I'm in dot loop. And I've created some uh, documentation already. So it's already pre filled. So uh, what we're going to do is um, so let's just say in a scenario you need to send uh, some, you need to send some documentation to a listing agent and you're not sure how to do that. Um, what you do is Dalu, um is really easy to do that where you can actually just select using these little check boxes here on the side of the file itself. So let's just say that we're going to send a lease agreement uh, back to um, the um, sorry for the disturbance. Make sure your your computers are in mute. So we have uh, like a lease agreement. Uh, we're going to send the broker's notice, the intermediary, and the security deposit. Let's just say that we want to select these uh, particular files and and email them to a, a listing agent, for example. Well. Uh, I've been noticing uh, some of my students, they'll just send one file at a time. Like they may just click here and then go up here and say download. And that's fine to do, but uh, it's going to create several files uh, rather than just have one file in general. So what dot loop allows you to do is it, it allows you to merge files together. So if you actually select these particular four files and click on download, it will actually merge all those files together as one file. And then if you open it up, you'll see the lease agreement. And that's one of them that we, um, we selected. <clears throat> and then the other ones were um, like the intermediary document, uh, the broker notice to tenant. So all these are one big file and here's a security deposit. So you can then just download it put it in your download folder, call it, you know, lease agreement package or something like that. Package. Um, so once you do that, then you can go to your email and then uh, attach that file. So we can go here, go to Yahoo email or whichever email you're using, doesn't really matter. Um, and then you can just compose an email and, you know, listing agent's name. Now, one thing that I recommend always to do is always put the address in the subject line. I noticed that, that um, uh, several agents forget to use the subject line and then we have no clue as, as the recipient what, what uh, this emails about. So here you can just say here is the lease agreement of the documents. And then you can just attach the file. Go to that file that you just downloaded. And there it is. And then you send it. So let's just say that you're sending um, you're sending uh, the paperwork to contract compliance. You know, eventually uh, most of y'all are going to be graduating 
and y'all going to be on your own with no um, uh, mentor. So let's just suppose you're doing that. Uh, you can go to the dot loop and let's just say that you need to send in the DA checklist, the DA, the IBS, the buyer rep agreement. You just select all of them. Now, another quick thing you can do is there's a little checkbox next to the actual name of the uh, folder. You can just select that too. And you see how when you select it, it selects everything at the same time. So you can just select that. And then again, you just download it and then send it to the office. So that's just one, one way of, of sending, you know, merging f uh, files together. All right. So um, another thing that, um, that sometimes it may happen is there's uh, a, a correction that was sent to you and, you know, it was sent to you as one page um, and, and, and then you're trying to merge them all together as one, another page. So for example, I have something here where I have uh, a page one that was corrected and there was some missing initials that needed to be done. And these were sent back to you from the, from the um, listing agent, for example. Well, the problem is they only sent you one page, you see? And what you can do is you can actually, um, and I'll show you in a minute how to do split, split documents. But in this example, I'm just gonna show you how to merge two of them together. Uh, I had already split this document up just so you can kind of see it. But here's page two and then page three and so on and so forth. So even though only page one was the one, only one that was being uh, manipulated and with uh, additional signatures, um, we just wanted to only modify page one. So what I did here is I had split that document, which I'll show in a minute how to split documents. And then you can just um, only use the signatures, you know, ask for signatures from the buyers and the sellers for that page. And then if you wanna merge these two together, you can just merge them by selecting the both uh, of those uh, selections. So for example, if you wanted to merge these two together, this is page one and this is the rest of the pages. When you do a download, it's gonna merge all that whole document together as one. So now we have page one and page two and so on and so forth. So one thing I really like about dot loop is that it allows you to merge documents together. You can do piece, piecemeal type stuff. Um, you can extract documents. Uh, so it's pretty powerful in that sense. So now let's just assume that um, you want to um, you want to split a document. Okay, let's just say that the document is is uh, has several things, but you only need one thing out of it. Um, one one thing you can do is um, so let's just say that you downloaded a document, and um, and and you wanna retrieve it, but you only wanna get um, certain things out of it. So what you do is you can do add document, then go to browse. It's gonna go into your computer system. And then I already have a uh, file here that, um, that I already have set up here. And let's just pretend that it's this file right here, splitting a file example. So I open that file up and this is a very big file. But what I like about it is that, um, you can you can then um, split it into different pieces. So if I open this file up, it's got the DA checklist, it's got you know the DA form, um, and it's got several things. So let's just say that we want to. Uh, oh, one thing that another thing that you can see here is as you're scrolling down. I don't know if you you guys can see this but there's the number three that pops up and then a number four. Well, this tells you what page number this particular page is located in this file. So you don't go by the page numbers down here, like page one of 16, you're supposed to really look at the page that it indicates over here on the right-hand side, like page four. So for example, 
let's just say that you wanted to split this this up. So let's just say you wanted to keep DA and the DA checklist and the DA, that's page one and two, for example. And then you wanna, uh, the page three is gonna be just the IABS, okay? And then the lease agreement, it starts at page four and it goes all the way to, um, pretty long uh, lease agreement. It goes all the way to 19. So then page three to 19. And then the buyer rep agreement is in page 20. And it go, I'm writing these, these uh, pages down so I don't forget. So that's why I, there's a little pause. So page 20 all the way to 24, okay? And then uh, broker notice is page 25. So keep in mind what I'm doing here is I'm notating the, the different pages for this particular document. This is page 26. And these are the security deposits and such, or I'm sorry, the money orders for the, uh, yeah, for the rent. And that is um, page 27. So what I did is I wrote down every page and I calculated it to be one, two, three, four, five, six documents, okay? So here's the real neat thing about it. And I know it might be a little bit complicated in the beginning, but whenever you have this file open, it's all merged together as one file. But if you wanna split the file up, you click on file, split documents. And then remember what I said that it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six documents. Well, here, your first thing you got to do is select six. And as you can tell, it says file one, file two, file three, file four, file five, file six. And over here on this other side is what pages. And remember, I was writing down the pages number. So the first file name, I'm going to call that one the DA checklist and DA. Okay. And that was page one and two. And then uh, the other one was the lease agreement. So a lease agreement. That one was page three through 19. So here you're literally telling it what page to, to do the split, okay? And then I think the other one was called buyer rep. I may be wrong here, but it's just an example. And then uh, 24, I thought, page 20 to 24. So buyer rep. And then the other one I think was called intermediary or something like that. I might be wrong. I can always rename it. That one was page 25. Uh, I think the other one was called broker notice. That one was page 26. So here, whenever there's only one page, you only put 25 to 25 because you only want that one page. And then broker notice is 26 to 26. And then the last page was the security deposits. And that was page 27 and 27. So what I'm doing here in the split name is I'm giving it the name of what that document's supposed to be and then the range that it's located for that big file that we loaded. Once you're done, you click on split document and now it creates all of them and it separates them. And then it puts it back in your loop. And it's pretty cool because now when you get out of that particular uh, document and you go back into your main loop, um, you'll see those files that I just created, the DA checklist, the DA, the lease agreement, the buyer rep, the intermediary, the broker notice, the security deposit. So that one big file, I separated them already. So now if you want to open it up, you can click on here. And this is only page one and two, which is what I had said. And then the other one was the lease agreement. So uh, you can click on that. And that one's already uh, separated as well. So you click on lease agreement and that's, oh, I did it kind of wrong here. Oh, I included uh, both of those. Well, anyway, um, but you can kind of see my point where you separate that big, huge file. And I get this question asked a lot from my students to go, Fernando, uh, like I had one where my, one of my students had two seller's disclosures. One of them was an old 2018 and the other one was the latest and greatest 2019. 
And I kept on telling him, only send me one seller's disclosure. And he says, I don't know how to split it out of the document. I don't know how to remove it. And, and here's a good way to, to do that. You know, just, you know, to use the split document. You see how now that one's just that. So it's just file and it's called split document. And it's pretty neat. Um, I really enjoy using that because in your business, in your real estate business, you're constantly going to be getting documentation and you need to learn how to manipulate PDF files um, and, and, and get them, you know, straight now. So let's just assume that, that you did the split. And in this particular case, you had to split them out because there was one thing that needs to be signed by uh, your client and you didn't want to send the client all these documents you know, because it's just too confusing. So you already split the document up. But let's just say they, there was one thing that they, somebody forgot to sign. You can just then click on that intermediary, for example, or this is the broker notice tenant, and then just do add signatures and then just assign it, go to Joe Buyer and then send it off, save and share. That way they own the, your clients only get that page, you know? Uh, they don't have to get the entire doc because some document, uh, some clients will tell you, why are you sending me everything? You know, I already saw all this or they get very confused and they think they're signing the same thing differently. And you're like, no, 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 no. I only want you to sign page, you know, 20 or page 26 of that whole file. And, and it's better to split the document up. Okay. Um, another thing that uh, you guys are going to encounter is how do you create a PDF file, you know, and, and in our office, uh, there's going to be uh, cases where um, the um, broker, Rick Rogers, will tell you, hey, since uh, they're not uh, doing, uh, using an option period uh, in paragraph 23 of the contract, you need to have them fill out a waiver, a letter. Well, in the TUR training folder, these letters are already there. So you can just, you know, grab them. You don't have to retype them from scratch. But once you download them, here's a Microsoft Word uh, document that you're gonna be using in your files whenever you're working with your clients. And on this particular one, it already has the logo. It says to Texas United Realty. It's from the buyer. Of course, you're gonna change this to the actual buyer's name and then the property, you know, address, and then the date. And then here it is just saying the buyer is aware and chooses not to have an option period in the contract for the property. Now, dot loop does not allow you to send, I mean, to sign Word documents. You, they have to be a PDF file. Now, uh, one thing that uh, everyone has on their computer, and it doesn't matter if it's a Mac or a, Word do, uh, or a Windows computer, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's two ways of creating PDF files. So this is a Word document. So this Word document is not a PDF file. Okay, it's not a PDF format. It's a Word document. And there's two ways to do it. You can do file, uh, save as, and then select where it says right here, where it says Word document. You can then select where it says PDF. You see how it says PDF? Let me do that again. So it's over here. Word doc, and it just says PDF. And then when you save it, it saves it as a PDF file. That's one way. Another way, if it's difficult for you to find that way, you can do file, print. And I know this is kind of weird because you're thinking, I don't want to print. But you can actually select. So right here, it has the printer that I have here at home. But I don't want to print this document. I want to create a PDF file. So you can just select this where it says Microsoft print to PDF. That way, whenever you print, it's really printing to a PDF file. And then when you click on print, it's gonna tell you where do you wanna put it at. So it's not really going to the printer, it's just printing it into a PDF file, okay? So let's do that again, just so everybody, can, I know it's kinda, of, but it's file, save as, and then you select the Word doc and change it to PDF and then click save, that's one way, or file print and select the Microsoft print PDF instead of your printer and then print that way. 
that way you can then import that file into dot loop. So for example, I already did that here with this file. Um, it's right here. See how it now looks like a, see how uh, the Word document has like a little W for Word, but the PDF file has these uh, white letters with the red band that says PDF on it. I know it's very tiny, but when you open this file up, it's an actual PDF file, okay? And then um, what you do is then you go into dot loop and then you can just retrieve that file, go to add documents, then browse, and then select the PDF file that says no option peer required. Press open. Now you have it here in your dot loop. It's the actual letter that I showed you previously. See how it's already there? It's got the names and everything. And then you just do add signature and then assign it to the person that's gonna sign it. And then you send it and that's it. So um, I know it takes practice. Uh, I know PDF files seem intimidated uh, to us um, sometimes, but uh, dot loop does really allow you to, to, um, to manipulate these files is pretty powerful. If you guys are using zip forms, um, I don't know if zip forms can merge documents, but you have access to dot loop and if you can still use zip forms, you know, if you're used to that, I, I'm, I still use zip forms myself, but I, I you know, if, if you need to merge or manipulate data or files, just go to dot loop and just kind of create a dummy, a dummy uh, a loop and just do everything that you want to do there for, um, or splitting the file or merging the file. Okay. Um, another thing that you may you may have problems with is the file might be too large, and I've I've heard this before from students. Hey, sometimes the file when I make it all in one, like for example, if I select all this at the same time, it might be a big huge file. Uh, there's a there's a lot of utilities out there. Uh, the most popular one that we we use is called Small PDF. It's smallpdf.com. Um, and you can just go in here and then you can click on this red, first red one that says compressed PDF. It says it reduces the size of your PDF. So you can just click on that and then you can just drop the file in here. You can choose a file or you can, um, you can uh, drag a file in here and just put it in there. And then it just compresses it and it makes it smaller. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, there are some other PDF editors. If like I, I, I pay for uh, Acrobat Reader, and I think it's twenty dollars a month. It also gives me that feature to compress files and and such. Um, I consider it a business expense, so that's why I use that. But um, so it also compresses files, and I don't use small PDF, but um, some a lot of us are in budgets, and you can use this one for right now. So that's another thing that you can use is smallpdf.com. Okay, uh, I think that's all I had on my agenda. Let me see, I think that's all. Fernando. Yes, ma'am, I'm open for okay. questions. What I just found out that, okay, I have a client who offered on a house, we didn't get it, then they were offering on another house and I called dot loop and you can select all the files, that uh, everything that they've already done Right. And send it to the other one and change the address and all the information is in there. And then they just sign again. And that right. was a big time saver. Yeah. So you can go in here and then say, maybe make a copy. Yes. Yeah. And then you can either uh, copy as a dot loop document, which is what you were talking about. Or another thing that um, people. Yeah. Thank, I, thank I made a yeah. dot yeah. loop document. Yeah, thank you, Karen, for that. That's really great uh, information. One thing that, and I'm glad you brought this up, there are times where uh, I've gotten my students telling me, oh, Fernando, every time I go in there, it destroys the signatures. And I, don't, I, wanted to, I want to preserve the signatures. I don't want to destroy the signatures. And Dotloop does that as a, <clears throat> a security feature because they don't want you to uh, manipulate the document when it's officially signed by others. So one, one good way to do that to preserve the signatures, let's just say that this lease agreement, you know, is not a PDF file. I'm, I'm saying that if it's a, if it's a dot loop um, document, you can go in here and you can click on make copy and make copy 
if you select this bottom one that says copy as a flat PDF, it will, and it says right here, signatures preserved, not edible, ed edible. So this allows you to preserve the signatures and then go into that file and then add maybe some other thing that you, it was forgotten. For example, you can open it up and then you can say, oh, I forgot to, uh, you know, it's not 8 one you know, uh, I'm going to do a strike through. I'm going to put strike through here. And they, you know, everybody says, oh, the house is not ready. Uh, they're really going to be moving, uh, you know, 8 5 2020 or something like that. And then you, you have to do signatures. You know, you have to do add initials for this change, assign Joe Buyer. And that, that way, you know, it's already preserved because you don't want to wipe out these signatures down here. And, and dot loop has that security feature where if you try to manipulate a dot loop document, it'll tell you, do you want to erase everything? <laughs> and you're like, no. So it's better to do that make copy. Um, that's a real nice feature. And then, then what Karen said about, you know, if you want to transfer over documents that the client has signed, because they're going to offer it uh, to another uh, house that, you know, that they prefer. You can then select those with the same feature of make copy and then send it to another dot loop. So, but thanks, thanks Karen. That was great. And you triggered something in my brain. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions before we wrap it up, guys? Um, I know it's a little intimidating sometimes these PDF files, the whole world runs around PDF. Um, we all use them. Sometimes we don't even know where we have a PDF file because um, we sometimes we don't even know what to call it. But all PDF files, they're everywhere uh, and you can create them through dot loop. Uh, and again, like I showed you, if you have Microsoft Word um, or any other product, you know, Excel spreadsheets or any anything else, uh, if there's no file save as, you know, where it gives you the option of a PDF, I'll guarantee you, you can always create a PDF file by doing print, okay? And selecting Microsoft PDF. This is very powerful, this part right here. Because there's times where you get a check, you know, uh, some um, money order and it's like, it looks like a picture, uh, you know, and you wanna convert it. Um, it's good to, um, I'm trying to see if there's any pictures here. Uh, and you want to convert it to, um, like for example, here's a picture of a house, okay? This is an actual picture. It says photos. But if I wanted to make this a PDF file, I just go to print, select PDF, print it. It asks me, what do I want to name it? And I'm just gonna put it in the desktop. And I'm going to say front house, you know, but it's a PDF file. I do that. And then I go to the desktop, my desktop and if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Front of house. I open it up. Now it's a PDF file. You see? So it doesn't matter what product you're using. You can always convert it to a PDF file. And you, sometimes you have to do that because they're easier, they're more manageable and they're more easier to move around. Plus, if, you, if you're, I know there's several students that like to keep everything in dot loop, you know, every single picture of maybe the home inspection report or some pictures that they took whenever they're, they went to go see a lease and there are things that need to be repaired. You take pictures, you can convert those pictures to a PDF file and then import them into your dot loop. That way everything's in dot loop. Okay, so Dalub is pretty powerful in that sense. Okay, uh, I hope uh, you guys learned something um, and I'm open for questions if anybody has any questions. I have a question, please. Yes. yes. Small PDF, is that a, like, a, like a free application or? Yes, it's free. Of course, they always want you to buy it. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes you say, really? Is it really free? 
Right. Yeah. Uh, small PDF. Uh, the what the way they make it free is that they only allow you to do two files per day. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's then. Why, uh, yeah, and that's why I got tired of it, and uh, I decided to pay for Acrobat Reader. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and Acrobat Reader allows me to merge files and. Yeah. And and small. So, but I mean, when you're first starting off as a realtor, you know. Yeah. I, what, like 13 years ago, I used to do everything free, <laughs> you know? Right. And then as, as I became more and more busy and making money, <laughs> and keep in mind, you know, it's a business expense. I know. You know, but so. But then uh, you compress it to be able to send it via email, so correct. it is not. Uh... Correct, correct. Because, uh, because Yahoo, Yahoo only allows, um, uh, 25 megabytes. Uh huh. And as soon as you move the file over to your email, it's going to tell you file too large. And it won't let you attach it. Yeah, but. Um, and then you have to compress it. I was going to ask regarding the same thing about small PDF, compressing files would be for. Do we really need to use it if we have a Yahoo? Well, the only time you use it is if, if, is if your Yahoo email tells you it's too big or your Gmail. Oh, if, okay, yeah. yeah but if, if, you are, yeah. if you are letting the other person, because with the loops, with the loops, you can just allow anybody to come in and, well, not anybody, but the no, client. No, well, you have to share. Yeah, you have to share. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, when you share, you do not need this PDF. No, right. correct, correct. When you share the link, no, you don't need it. Somebody's, uh, making Somebody's <laughs> Looks like I uh, turned them off. Um, any other questions before we wrap it up, guys? Okay. No, thank you very much. Fernando, recently I've noticed when you go to HAR on your phone in the app, and like you pull the seller's disclosure or the, uh, you know, extra documents for realtors, you know, like the upgrades list. Yes. Used to, I could save those to dot loop from my phone. Now it's only letting me print. I can't even email it out of there. Is that something horror is done? Hmm. Do you know so, what I'm talking about? So whenever you, uh, whenever you're on your phone and you open the seller's disclosure attachment. Yes. Now okay. I can't just upload it to dot loop or save to my phone or email from it. It just gives me the option to print. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. At all. I know I, had, I did not know that. Well, I did an upgrade on my phone and I'm thinking, no, no, I don't know if it's my phone or if it's dot loop. So, okay. You haven't been running into no, that. No, no, so. I have not. No, sorry. I didn't. All right. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Sure guys. Um, any other questions before we wrap it up? Hopefully y'all learned something about PDF here. Yes, we did. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.